to make the gradient, we just scale the feather of the mask. Scale that to a certain point here. And now you can see the feather is uh, this gradient here. And then choose our mask background. And now you can see how the gradient looks. So open up a new instance of Blender, go to File, New, Video Editing. Let's collapse the file browser by hovering over the preview area in the top left corner where you see the crosshairs, click and drag over to the left and let go. You can see my screencast keys right here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go to view and uncheck limit view to contents. So then I can middle mouse and drag around the timeline a little bit more freely. Next, we can come to add, choose color, and then we can click and drag and bring that up. And then if I press period on the numpad, I can zoom in to whatever I have selected. So make sure you have your color strip selected and then come over to your side panel. If you don't see the side panel, press N on the keyboard and then you'll find your color wheel you can adjust. You should also make sure you're on the strip tab at the top. That's where you'll find the color wheel. And I'm just gonna make this a bright red color. Next, I'm going to duplicate the color strip by pressing Shift D and put it right on top. And then we'll bring the value of this color down. The preview is now showing the darker strip because the darker strip is on the highest channel. If you imagine a camera looking from these timeline numbers downwards, then the topmost strip is the top layer and it will look down through anything that is on the next channel or has transparency, it will see through that to the next channel below. So if I move the top strip, you can see where the blue timeline cursor is, it now is showing the bright red strip on the channel below. So I'm just gonna move that back. And so now let's go to the rendering workspace up here. And I'm going to right click and duplicate this and then rename it by double clicking and then I'll type masking. Then change this option from view to mask. And then the first thing I'm going to do is come over to output properties, go all the way down to the bottom, open up post-processing and make sure sequencer is checked. I'm also gonna uncheck compositing because we're not using that right now. And then I'm gonna hover my mouse over here and press F12, and that will render out a single frame. Now come to the top and press new to create a new mask. And I'm going to call this mask background because we're gonna use a mask to make the gradient. So first I'm going to move the 2D cursor from down here in the corner into the middle. So come over here to the view tab and then under 2D cursor, I'm gonna change the location of the X and the Y to 0.5. And now it's right in the center of our resolution. So let's now come up to add and then choose square. And then let's select the top two by shift selecting, press X to delete and delete the top two. And then I'm gonna press A to select the rest of them, press S to scale and scale that all the way across. I'm gonna bring this down to the bottom by pressing G and then Y. And then to make the gradient, we just scale the feather of the mask. And you do that by pressing Alt S. And you can see we've got this weird looking shape, which is not what we want. So to fix this, come up to the mask tab and then uncheck cyclic. And now the feather line is the green line that is coming out that is parallel to our white mask line. So I'm gonna press Alt S again, scale that to a certain point here. That looks good. And to see what this is doing, we can come up to mask display and then choose overlay. And now you can see the feather is uh, this gradient here. And we can change the fall off by coming to this drop down and choosing different fall off types. We can also turn the mask curves off by coming back up to mask display and unchecking spline. Or we can just uncheck this button under the mask layers. So we can kind of see what each of these does, choose the one that you like the best. But when you're working with gradients and feathers in Blender, just be aware that it can produce some banding, which are these solid lines that seem to be going across our image. And that's just each of them gradually getting darker. That's what creates your gradient. But this all depends on the color bits that you're using and the computer screen that you're using. So this is gonna be different for everyone. So you have to do your own tweaking to reduce the amount of banding that you see. Okay, so now let's go use this. So go back to video editing, select the top color, go to modifiers, add strip modifier, mask, click mask, and then choose our mask background. And now you can see how the gradient looks. All of the white areas are going to show the darker background. And as it fades out into black, that's where it 
the darker background will be invisible. And that's why you can see the darker color at the bottom because that's where the majority of the white part of the mask is. And we can actually see this in the masking workspace. If we uncheck our overlay and then press F12, then we can see the result of the mask. So if we change the fall off to something different, so smooth, and then press F12, then we can see what the smooth fall off looks like with our colors. And I like the smooth fall off a little better, so I'm going to keep that. So let's come back to our video editing workspace, and then let's refresh just to make sure. So we can come to view, and then refresh all, uh, which is also control R. So now I'm going to select the bottom color strip, come over to the strip tab, and then bring the value down just a little bit, something like that. And then go back to the rendering, press F12, and that's looking pretty good. So that is how you create a gradient from one color to another color in Blender's Video Sequence Editor. You can find this video and a whole lot more by going to my new website, blenderfrenzy.com, where you can access lots of free and members-only content, including extra tutorials, downloads, assets, blend files, Q&A live streams, and much more. Signing up helps support me, which in turn gives you more Blender content, so head on over to blenderfrenzy.com and become a member today. Oh. <sighs>